I have a special guest on my hymn video, Pastor Wilsey. Uh, we are talking about the hymn of the day for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We're still in the John chapter 6 readings. And um, the hymn of the day is number 724, If God Himself Be For Me. And it's a really great hymn. Uh, it is also... Um, a little bit long. You'll see it's this entire page plus this. Uh, ten whole verses. Um, so, Pastor, why did you pick this hymn for this Sunday? Um, I picked the hymn for this Sunday because we're talking about Elijah. We're talking about Elijah from uh, Kings chapter, or First Kings chapter 19, 1 through 8. And we're going to do kind of a, a big part of, of this. Um, and this whole story starts off in chapter 18, uh, with the prophets of Baal being challenged by uh, Elijah. Elijah predicts a drought, uh, then he confronts Ahab, um, and they, they kind of go up to Mount Carmel and have what I'd call a prophet off. <laughs> um, so if you remember the story, they, they, the prophets of Baal build a sacrifice, and then Elijah builds a sacrifice, and they're going to pray to their gods and see... Whoever God yeah, answers who win. by yeah. fire wins. Yeah. And Elijah wins. Yes. Like, spectacularly. Like, like fire from heaven igniting his soaked sacrifice when the others had been, you know, self-mutilating and nothing happened with their fake God, so. And they got put to the sword. Yeah. This is it's great. This is a great story. Uh, except that um, uh, at the end of the story, nothing really changes. He had already uh, asked the, the Israelites, how long are you going to go limping between two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. Elijah proves by mighty works, mighty deeds, the hand of the Lord, that God is real, that God is active, that he is with them, even in this deplorable age. Um, and Ahab realizes it. Ahab knows. And so Ahab then does what Ahab would do, which is to run to the wicked queen Jezebel and tell her. And so Jezebel's like, I'm going to kill him. And uh, Elijah is fearful at that time. And so he runs off because he sees that, that nothing else is going to change. Um, and so that's where our, our text starts off for the day of uh, Elijah being fearful. And he goes through a number of different uh, different things. Um, he's hiding out in the wilderness and God comes to him and says, what are, you, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he says, I've been very, very jealous for the Lord God, the Lord of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenants. They've thrown down your altars. They've killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even only I am left and they seek my life to take it away. Um, and Elijah does this twice, um, and uh, he he's he's wrong. Yeah, he, he feels like he is all alone. There's nobody else who is faithful to the Lord, but also uh, like his enemies are are all against him, and they're going to defeat him. And so, what's the point? And I don't want to do this anymore. Um, and so, how then does that that uh, all of my enemies are against me? They want to defeat me. I don't want to do this anymore. Nobody else cares. How does that? Uh, relate to what we're doing with our hymn this week. Um, yeah, because God basically says you're wrong. Yeah. Um, and, and we are too. Sometimes, sometimes we look at the world. Um, we look at our times and we sort of lament it. We were just doing that this morning. We're just like actually four minutes ago talking yeah. about how uh, the world, everything, everybody's horrible, nobody's good, and nobody cares about the Lord anymore. Um, yeah. We're and, just like Elijah. And we're just like Elijah. We're like, oh, why do I why do why do we do this? Why do we keep beating our head against a wall when nobody seems to be listening? Um, and the truth there is is the fact that we're wrong. When we get to this point of despair, we are just flat wrong. God is with us, even when we don't see it, even when we don't understand it, even when it's going behind us. Um, and this is what Paul Gerhardt's saying in his hymn. If God himself before me, I may a host defy. For when I pray before him, my foes confounded fly. If Christ my head and master befriend me from above, what foe or what can disaster can drive me from his love? Yeah. Um, and this hymn just goes through it and through it and through it. And I had, I'd, 
I talked about and thought about trying to bring this down from uh, 10 verses down to uh, a couple more, something a little more handleable. Reasonable, yeah. Um, reason, I don't like the reasonable. 10 verses is is reasonable, especially because it the, the hymn is so well written and so well put out um, because it goes from God... There's nothing from God can move me, and it brings us into despair a little bit and then reminds us that, that God is there and God is true. Uh, you just look at these last couple of verses. Um, verse 8, No danger, thirst, no hunger, no pain, nor poverty, no earthly tyrant's anger shall ever vanquish me. Though earth shall break asunder, my fortress you shall be. No fire, no sword, nor thunder shall sever you from me. Verse 9, no angel, no gladness, no throne, no pomp, no show, no love, no hate, no sadness, no pain, no depth of woe, no scheming, no contrivance, no subtle thing, small or great, shall draw me from your guidance, nor from you separate. Oh, boy, I wish I could read. Yeah, that would be really nice. It It'd goes, really through, nice. But it goes through this, the whole hymn goes through any anything in the world that we could feel like is our enemy or is against us and says, nope, God has an answer for that. And they're not, they're not going to win. And that's how the story with Elijah really ends is like God coming to him and saying, yep, I hear you and I am going to let you retire. Uh, but you can do the rest of this. I'm going to be with you. I'm giving you my authority and my power. Go do these final things. Oh, and by the way, there are 7,000 in Israel that still love me. So, uh, yeah, God really is still there for him, even when he feels like he's feels yeah. like he's being defeated. So yeah, so it'll be ten verses. Woohoo! It will be time well spent. Yes. Uh, as we talked about last week, cherish the Sabbath. The Sabbath has been given for you to cherish. It's not a burden. It is a, a rekindling of our soul. It is the feeding of our, our our hearts, our minds, our bodies. Get us back out there. Yeah, so be fed by these 10 verses. It's going to be a good time of it. We're going to have fun this week. Yeah. We'll see you on Sunday.